Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Jen. This is Journeys with Jen. I share all of my travels with you guys and I am a travel advisor, but the thing that is different about me is if you have seen my previous videos, I am brutally honest in regards to the places that I go. So you're not going to see me hard selling you on anything here because I genuinely share my experience. You'll see a lot of videos that are kind of like what I loved and what I hated about a particular cruise, resort, whatever it may be. So I am really, really going to be honest with my clients. And today what I am going to be sharing with you is a packing list that is specifically geared towards Sandals Resorts. I'm so excited to let you guys know that I am headed to St. Lucia in just two days. This was such a last minute trip, which is totally not normal for me. I am a planner and I just know that the earlier you plan, the less money you're typically going to spend. So for me to be planning this trip only two weeks out is insane. But anyway, I'm really excited for it. I'm going to be staying at Sandals Halcyon. And what I love about this particular resort in Sandals is there are three properties in Sandals. And this particular resort is the one in the middle. So I will be able to either go to Sandals Grand St. Lucian or to Sandals La Talk and it's gonna be a quick little transfer, like 15, 20 minutes, whichever direction I decide to go. And of course, while I'm there, I'm going to try out all of the properties so I can come back to you guys and let you know how I felt about them. So really, really excited. Hopefully I'll be having dinner and drinks and some entertainment in beach time in all of the resorts. So that being said, let's go over the packing list because there are some things that you may not need to pack for sandals that you would otherwise pack for other resorts. And I really wanted to go over this list with you. I have created this list and I will share it with you guys at the end so you can you know, keep it on your phone or whatever. But we're gonna start with like the basics because I did start packing today. So the first thing you're going to begin with is women's clothing. So what I do is I bring usually a bathing suit for every day of my trip because number one, I have so many bathing suits. They're so small to pack. And in addition to that, I hate wearing bathing suits that are wet. And sometimes it can take a few days for a bathing suit to completely dry, especially when you're in the Caribbean and there's a lot of moisture in the air. So I will bring a bathing suit for every day of my trip. Something else that you should bring is cover-ups that are nice. I mean, something that you can put over your bathing suit and you can go out to lunch. You can even go into a sit-down restaurant. I really like to either do a really nice sundress or if it is a cover-up, something that kind of looks nicer, that's not too bare, like not something that's totally mesh that you can see through. Something a little bit more elegant looking. In regards to resort wear, it's a little bit different for me than other vacations, like if I were going to the Jersey Shore or if I were going on a cruise, I feel like those vacations are a little more casual. I like to dress kind of nicer at a nice resort. So that's just the way that I personally feel, but I mean, you do you, but I really like to kind of look well put together. And I do like to have the option of going and sitting down and having lunch if I wanted to do so. So I will have extra cover-ups. This is important. If you're going on, say, a snorkeling excursion, because this did happen to me, I had on my bathing suit, I had on a cover-up, and on the boat, I got completely soaked. And after the excursion, we were going directly to lunch. So a friend of mine who has already previously had this experience on a sandals vacation had extra cover-ups in her beach bag. And she just gave me one and I was able to wear a nice dry cover-up over my bathing suit and go out to lunch. So I would definitely recommend bringing more than you think you need and keeping it in your beach bag so that you have a backup cover-up when you're out and about for the day. Something else that you're going to want to bring are sundresses. I think sundresses are so much nicer than wearing, say, like jean shorts and a t-shirt because they can do double duty, first of all. You can use a really nice cotton sundress as a cover-up. You can dress it up for dinner. So I really think that sundresses are a great thing to pack. And again, I will do that. I will oftentimes use a cute sundress as my cover-up so I can look well put together in the afternoon or in the morning if I'm going to breakfast. I can already have my bathing suit on but have like a cute sundress over it. 
Something else that you're going to want to bring are, if you're going to wear shorts, I would recommend doing kind of like a nicer top and shorts that are not denim. I just think it looks nicer and makes for better resort wear if that's the look you're going for. Something else that you might want to consider bringing is a more formal dress. A lot of the restaurants do require you to dress a little bit nicer. Some are a little bit more fancy than others. And I don't mean like a full on like sequin dress, but just something a little bit more formal than say a basic cotton sundress. And then you may also want to bring a variety of different shoes. Now I am a light packer and I only do carry on, so I will go as minimal as possible. But something I will definitely do is wear my sneakers on the plane because I'm almost always in a situation where I'm going to need sneakers, whether I wanna to go to the gym, on an excursion, go for a walk around the resort. It's just always smart to have a good pair of sneakers packed. And in addition to that, you want a pair of either pool shoes or water shoes or both. And what I mean by that is sandals, flip-flops, whatever, something maybe waterproof that you can wear to the pool. And sometimes beaches are, ro are rocky. And even if they're not rocky at your particular beach, if you're going on an excursion, you might be in a situation where there is a beach that is rocky. So you have some options. These are your typical like water shoes. They completely cover your entire foot. But lately I have been wearing Tevas and I have worn these in Hawaii, in the water, snorkeling, climbing on volcanic rock, okay? So these are totally waterproof. They're pretty banged up because I've worn them so much, but I also like them because they're adjustable. The straps are adjustable all the way around, so they're really comfortable and you can walk right into the ocean with them. But also I have worn them in the evening with a sundress to dinner. So those are just like, the type of shoe that if you're trying to pack light, you can use it for the pool, you can use it for the beach, you can use it, use it for hiking. They're super comfortable and you could even get away with wearing it to dinner at night. And then these I recently got for the pool. They're just croc sandals, waterproof. So I thought these would look nice with a sundress over a bathing suit at the pool. Something else that you're going to want to bring is either a light sweater or a jacket. It can be overly air conditioned sometimes, and I just always tend to get cold, especially flying. And we're in March right now. It's pretty cold in New Jersey, so I don't want to be freezing on the flight. Usually what I'll do is wear a denim jacket. And even though I said not to wear like denim shorts, I think that maybe it's the 90s girl in me. I love a denim jacket over a dress. I just think it looks so nice together. And it's something that I can wear on the plane. It's something that I can wear over a sundress if I get a little bit chilly in a restaurant or at a show and it's just great to have. But also you could do a shawl or just a light sweater, just something to have in case it gets chilly. Something else that you might want to consider bringing is, and I actually didn't put that this on here, so this is a bonus item, is possibly a rain jacket or a poncho or an umbrella because in the Caribbean, it does tend to rain. And although in all likelihood, your day isn't gonna be a total wash, if you're trying to get from point A to point B and it is a torrential downpour, having an umbrella or a way to cover yourself up is going to be really important. So that's something you may want to consider doing. And at the end of my like general packing list, I'm gonna give you guys some bonus items as well. So make sure you stay till the end. Okay, pajamas, undergarments, like socks, underwear, bras, all of that good stuff, a sun hat or a baseball cap. So I just got this. I Again, I think that a sun hat is going to look nicer than a baseball cap if you're wearing a sundress especially. And I don't know how this is gonna be. This is my sun hat. I just got this at Target. Hopefully it'll look okay with like a sundress. I don't know, we'll see. But it does have the adjustable band inside so you can make it tight to fit your head in case there are windy conditions. Um, definitely have something to protect your face, whether it's a baseball cap or a sun hat, um, something like that. And then bringing a little handbag is always a great idea. I love this handbag. I got this at Francesca's last summer and it's just a great way to like keep your phone, keep some lipstick. I usually have like Advil and stomach medication, um, tissues, stuff like that in here. But it's always nice to just have a cute little handbag that you can bring with you to dinner at night. And then of course you're going to want a beach bag. I try to bring something that's super easy to pack. 
So this bag actually completely flattens in my suitcase. So it really doesn't take up any space at all. And it's just good to have when you're going to the pool, going to the beach, they will provide towels for you. So you can just have something to put your towels and your sunscreen and all that stuff in. You may want to check to see if you need to be reef safe with your sunscreen. I believe the sun bum products are, so I did pick this up, but definitely make sure you look into that. Another reason that you probably should use a travel agent because they can help direct you and let you know um, what the beach situation is going to be like, whether you need the reef safe sunscreen, whether you need water shoes because it's rocky. There's just so many things that may be unknown to you that somebody else would know. Okay, of course you're gonna bring sunglasses and I have a lot of options for sunglasses and I just realized that because I like to read on the beach um, and I do have readers, I don't have like the sunglass readers and they do have them on Amazon. So I just ordered a pair. Hopefully that'll be a great thing to just keep in my beach bag. But I always bring a couple of pairs of inexpensive sunglasses. I learned my lesson not bringing expensive sunglasses. My husband had a pair stolen on a Puerto Rico trip. So I definitely um, keep it cheap and I just keep a couple in my bag. So I'll likely wear one on the way on the flight and then I will put one in my little case and throw it in my beach bag as well. Something else that you may want to consider bringing is a backpack because if you do go on an excursion, you're probably going to want a place to keep like a bottle of water, sunscreen, um, bug spray, stuff like that. So definitely a backpack would come in handy. So that's everything on my list for women's clothing. For men's clothing, pretty much the same thing. You're gonna have a bathing suit, t-shirts and shorts, dress pants, um, polo shirts and button down shirts. You're also going to want flip flops or water shoes, some kind of slides, dress shoes for going out to dinner at night and sneakers. I have a belt, sunglasses, baseball cap or hat, and then your typical socks, pajamas, underwear, undershirts. And then the same thing goes, another backpack, um, some sunglasses and some sun reading glasses if you need them. Okay, so now I'm going to go over some of the toiletries that I like to bring. Now this is where things are a little bit different because at Sandals, they do provide very good quality shampoo, conditioner, body wash, body lotion, all of that stuff. And that is stuff that I usually do bring, but since I only do carry on, it is very nice to be able to take those items off of the list and not have to worry about bringing them. So the things that I will pack though are sunscreen, aloe vera gel, bug spray, obviously toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, mouthwash, all of your dental care stuff, um, deodorant and hair tools. So I don't usually bring a blow dryer, but we'll bring either a curling iron or a straightening iron or both. And something else that I will do is bring like any hair products that I need. Um, if I have like some kind of gel, mousse, something like that, that's, that's something you'll wanna bring. Also deodorant, face wash, makeup remover, um, your makeup. And then I do the typical like Advil, Tylenol. I'll do any kind of like um, upset stomach medication. I'll probably also pack like C-bands because sometimes, and again, check with your travel advisor or with me if you book through me, but sometimes the drive from the airport to the resort can be long. So for us in particular, I believe it's going to be about an hour and a half drive from the airport to our resort in St. Lucia at uh, St. Lucia Halic Halcyon. So it's not your typical American roads. The roads are going to be very windy and probably bumpy and I just am worried about getting car sick. So I'm probably gonna have C-bands and ginger tabs and all of those things for that leg of the trip. And then you're going to wanna bring any um, feminine hygiene products, any eye care products, shower cap, that's something I always pack. And then you have your like shaving cream, razor, Q-tips, hand sanitizer, perfume, cologne, band-aids, chapstick. I like to get chapstick that has SPF in it. Super important so that you don't burn your lips. I'm gonna show you some like bonus items and just some other random things that I didn't mention yet. 
Um, obviously a portable charger. This has been my favorite one. I like it because it plugs in, like there's a plug right on the back so you can plug it in. And you'll have to also check to make sure that um, they do have, you know, regular American plugs. Most of the resorts do, but for some you might need some kind of a um, conversion plug obviously your passports. I'm just like going through my bag here. A good book already in my beach bag. Okay, but another thing that you might want to do is get a reusable mug. So this is great. I've, I've shown this on all of my packing videos, I feel like, and I really haven't even changed it up over the years. I've had this Yeti forever. It has interchangeable lids. So this is the lid that has um, the little sipper for having like coffee, but you also can do hot or cold drinks in this. And then there's also a lid that has a straw, but obviously it's unlimited drinks. And sometimes when you're on the beach and you want a cold drink, this will keep it cold for a long time. And it will give you a lot more than if you're just having them fill the smaller cups at the bar. Something else that's great to have, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of water activities, uh, the water activities are actually included at Sandals Resorts, which is one of the things that I love because if you have gone to other resorts, just snorkeling alone can be anywhere from 30 to $40 a person to rent all of the snorkel gear. And if you're doing a full on excursion where a boat is taking you out, you know that can get pricey. Well, at Sandals, you can take a boat out and go snorkeling and do all other kinds of water sports and it's included in the price. So that's amazing. That being said, I have my GoPro. I usually bring it snorkeling with me. And then I also have a floatable case for it because that helps in the event that I were to drop it. So super helpful. Something else that you might wanna do is get some little towel clips. These are great because you can find where you're gonna be sitting for the day, use your towel clips. I actually even wrote my name on these <laughs> so nobody takes them because they're so cute. Um, but I will clip these on the chair that I'm going to be using for the day and then I'll know where I am because sometimes I swim off and I get confused when I look back at the beach. I'm like, where is my stuff? So you'll be able to identify where you are and plus you'll be able to kind of secure your area for the day. Something else that I no longer travel without ever are one of these little phone protectors that you can actually swim in the ocean with. And I have taken some pretty amazing video when I didn't have my GoPro on my phone through this bag. It's crazy that it works, but it does. And um, I can literally keep my phone with me at all times. I never leave my phone unattended for a minute because my phone's just that important to me. I have too much video content and photos and things on my phone to take that chance. So I will always have this with me. That's really, really important. And then um, I have my e-docs printed out. Again, something else that you need to know, depending on where you're traveling to, you might have to fill out some paperwork prior to your trip and print out those e-documents. And then I just have a comb. And then I always have one of these little like ring lights, which come in handy for vloggers <laughs> because if you're filming at night or in the hotel room you just clip this onto your phone and it has different settings and it lights everything up for you and i have one of these plastic bags that i got from amazon that fit all of my toiletries perfectly so i have mostly sample size stuff in here um I do have things that I need to take out that I don't need because like I said, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, all that I'm not going to need right now, but this is just kind of always packed and ready to go for my trips. So that comes in handy. And then the last thing that you might want to consider bringing is a lot of small bills and I know sandals does not allow tipping. They are really, really great about that. They don't want their clients to tip them. At the resort, you're just supposed to have a good time and not have to worry about like tipping the bartender every time and tipping the wait staff and stuff like that. But there are situations where you might just wanna have some small bills. So the person that's taking care of your luggage at the airport, if somebody's helping you with luggage, you might wanna give them a tip. Um, somebody else that you can tip at the Sandals Resort is your butler. If you have a butler suite, it is okay to tip your butler. They go above and beyond and they do so much throughout your trip that it may be something that you want to consider doing. 
And then if you're doing an excursion, you may want to tip the person who is hosting the excursion and giving you so much information and working so hard. That's okay. And then the last thing that is okay is to tip the driver who takes you from the airport to your sandals resort and then from your sandals resort back to the airport. Uh, sandals always does provide transfers. So, you know, that driver, you are allowed to tip that person or they do appreciate your tips, I should say. It's not necessary, but it is appreciated. But once you're at the resort, you're just going to kick back, relax, have a great time. Don't worry about tipping. And here is my um, packing list if you want to save it screenshot it, whatever you need to do, save this video, come back to it another time. Those are all the basic things that I need to pack for myself, my husband, and the toiletry situation. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you are considering going to Sandals or any other resort or any other vacation that you could dream of, I can help you with it and I would love to help you plan. So my info is always in the description below. Feel free to reach out. I would love to help you out. And that's it for now. I am going to pack up and I'm going to be headed to Sandals very soon. St. Lucia is an island that I love, so I cannot wait to visit. Cannot wait for the 87 degree weather that is ahead of me coming from the 40 degree rainy and cloudy weather here in New Jersey. It's going to be a dream and I am going to share it all with you while I'm there. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.